Yeah. What was what was so funny is like the whole time I'm watching the Caucasian actor going, he reminds me so much of Clint Eastwood. Like he's got the mannerisms, he's got the voice. Gee, I wonder why. And then, and then it's a Scott Eastwood at the end of the movie. I'm like, oh. Pff. Hello, people. I am Javi Koy, joined again by Joanna Califatis. Hello. We're going to talk about Pacific Rim Uprising. We got to go to a screening of the film. This is going to be a non-spoiler video. First and foremost, I want to thank 40X for getting us into the screening of the film. Really, really appreciate it. 40X, if you guys don't know, is a very awesome experience. It's a great way to watch films where the chair is moving with you. You've got like particle effects from weather, snow, rain, all that good Wind, stuff. All that. The whole thing is a great way to watch an action film. I strongly recommend it to all of you guys. Please, if you get a chance, if there's a 40X theater near you, do check it out. Pacific Rim Uprising ha is my favorite 40X experience so far. For me, it was only my second experience and it was a wonderful time. Yeah. It was really amazing. Yeah. You feel like you're way more in the movie than right. usual. <laughs> there was some, it, like right from the get-go, yeah. like when you're just like flying and stuff, I, yeah. I felt the wind in my face and right. like the vibrating chairs. It immerses I'm, you right from the beginning. Yeah. Like, it just throws you in there. It's great. Exactly. Yeah. And then there was like this part where things are launching and you feel your chair like going back and <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I feel like I'm right there. Half the time I just had a smile like this, like I was on some 3D, right? I'm like, yes! Yeah. <laughs> just to give you guys some information from the film, this comes from IMDb. Jake Pentecost, son of Stacker Pentecost, reunites with Mako Mori to lead a new generation of Jaeger pilots, including rival Lambert and a 15-year-old hacker, Amara, against a new kaiju threat. That accurately sums up the film, I think. Yeah. That gives you a very good indication of what's to come in the movie. I would give this movie, just right off the bat, a three out of five stars. I watched both. I actually wasn't the biggest fan of that movie. I like this one more than that. Even though the first one's story probably made more sense, this one I had more fun with. I watched the first Pacific Rim and honestly it was a while ago. I don't remember much about it, but I do remember being way more engaged in this movie. Like I definitely had more fun with it, like you said. I never felt like it was going too long or are we waiting for something or something like that. It, it kept you going the Definitely whole time. not waiting. <laughs> yeah. The movie just yeah. kept going. It's like, we're gonna go do this. And then they're doing it. Yeah. And we're it's gonna like, go, oh, oh, like right now. You meant yeah, now. Yeah, okay. Exactly. There's like no preamble, no lead up. It's like the moment they're dropped into the situation, mm -hmm. there's war, there's action immediately. You know, that's both good and bad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I needed to breathe and the movie didn't let me breathe. It just kept moving. There were a couple moments where I'm like, wait, why are we doing this? Why are we going there? I'm yeah. not a thousand percent sure. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, there are some parts where I got a little bit lost as yeah. to the objective. Like, the overarching objective is clear mm -hmm. to beat the bad guy right like that's clear but not very complex yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's, it's not a complicated movie in that regard but like there's so much action overall that I'm like okay I, I kind of forgot why we're doing this mm -hmm. but at the same time I was having a lot of fun John Vega managed to do a good job carrying the movie and I think that's what made this more enjoyable than the first one in the first Pacific Rim there wasn't really any charismatic actors in the film. Like, right. it was just there. They were just kind of filler human beings. <laughs> they didn't really matter. There was nothing memorable about them. Mm -hmm. Whereas at least John Boyega and Kaylee Spaney. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce I don't know how to say her last name, but she plays Amara the Hacker. Yeah. She's really good too. She's a young girl and, and she does a good job. She did a very good job for me, especially with, um, I mean, I don't know if she doesn't count as a child actor. She's probably teen-ish years. Yeah. But, you know, it's always a... Still child, but yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. You can't vote yet, so... <laughs> so, so still child. She definitely did a great job, and sometimes, you know, when you're putting a lead that's uh, under the age of 18, how well they do can really make or break a movie. And for me, she did a wonderful job against Boyega, like, carrying the film. Scott Eastwood was interesting. He reminded me of a young Clint Eastwood. Like, I was just like... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how Clint Eastwood <laughs> behaved. It was almost like he was in the wrong movie sometimes because he was so much like a Western actor with yeah. the eyebrows and that voice. You, you want to mess with me? This town ain't big enough for the two of us. Kind of attitude <laughs> in this futuristic sci-fi post-apocalyptic movie. It was weird, but sometimes it worked well. Sometimes mm -hmm. it was just odd. Bern Gorman, who plays the scientist guy, he's exactly the same as he was in the first movie from what I remember. Charlie Day was way less obnoxious this time, which I was happy Wait. about. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Any less obnoxiousness from Charlie Day is always a good thing for me. Like, I think he did a better job here. He reined himself in quite a bit. Yeah. The slew of Asian actors in the film did a great job of being there and helping the story along. The biggest takeaway isn't going to be the acting. The biggest takeaway is going to be, of course, the visual effects, which is phenomenal. Some of the best visual effects I've seen just ever. When I'm watching it, I I'm, I'm forgetting that it's CGI. 
That's Definitely. How, that's how good it is. Now, I don't know if that's being helped at all by the 4DX, but like even from the commercials, I remember watching and I'm like, this is really, really good. Like it's Power Rangers times a million, you know? <laughs> it's like, I don't know if you guys have ever watched Power Rangers, but like, you know, uh, robots fighting monsters yeah. in Japan or, you know, buildings being knocked over and being used as weapons and stuff like that. You, you're getting that, but with the best visual effects ever. If you want to see a visual effects spectacle, this mm -hmm. is the movie. I mean, I would even consider going back and watching it in 3D because it was, it was so stunning. Definitely, and the way I always gauge visual effects is if I'm being impacted to what's happening on, like, robots yeah. on screen, for example, because a lot of the time when it's super CGI and it's not convincing, you find that you're not really buying a lot of it. Yeah. And in this movie, I was, I mean, I don't know if you noticed, I was flinching at some point, so they were like hitting I, I the did, robots, and yeah. that's not a spoiler to say the no. robots. The robots get hit sometimes, guys. There are robots in the movie. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was definitely very, I mean, it, the effects were so good that it was definitely immersive, and you definitely felt that real things were happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, it, yeah. It, it looked real. Yeah. They looked more real than the people in the movie. <laughs> the <laughs> monsters looked really good too. Like, I mean, just that's 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 where they, they spent their money right. Right. They spent their money very very well For sure. on the visual effects, and it's like that's why you go watch the film. It's it's the most realistic monster robot action mm -hmm. movie I've seen so far. I think we've supplied enough information to do You're either into robot monsters or you're not. Yeah. I, one of two camps. I, so. I, I did get hit with the Transformers feeling a little bit, but not quite as hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know when you watch Transformers and you're like, wow, this is, this is a, this is still happening, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, it's still <laughs> but 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 it's it's a it's a much better film I feel than Transformers than any of the Transformers films I've seen except for maybe the first Transformers yeah. and the reason why is because each of the Transformers films um, after the first one go on for like a really long time mm -hmm. and this one is. <laughs> dead stop in an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah. Like, it's a sh much shorter film. And people are more likable in this film. <laughs> and people are much more likable yes. in this movie. It doesn't drag on. It's like, it moves, yeah. it moves, it moves. And mm -hmm. I would have uh, I would have liked it more, I think, if it allowed itself to have about nine more minutes just to, like, breathe here and there. Mm -hmm. So, like, let us know, okay, this is happening now. Get ready. Bow! <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> because it was just, like, a non-stop fury action ride. Like, it was, a, you know... Balls yeah. to the wall, insane. There are a couple moments where you're like, okay, this action sequence is winding down. Uh, let's see how we're gonna set up the next one. It's like, oh no, the next one's already here. Yeah, I'm like, exactly. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I I need a second. Um, but I think the way the sequences were edited for me was really good because in the Transformers movies, for example, I get a little lost in what's going on in the fight because I feel like it's going so, uh, it's being edited so rapidly and there's explosions, and there's kind of this incoherence mm -hmm. that happens sometimes. And I never really felt that in this movie. I always, I was always following what was happening even though there was a lot of action. Mm -hmm. I was always following what was happening in the fights and in all those sequences. I wasn't ever lost as to who was where and what was going on, who was in the fight, who wasn't. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. So, you guys, um, be sure to check out the film in 4DX if you go watch mm -hmm. it. I strongly recommend it. Even if you're not a huge fan of these types of films, I would say that the 4DX experience is going to be unforgettable because it really is. It was insane. It's amazing. It was bananas. It's amazing. Do check it out in 4DX, you guys. Um, I I've said that way too many times. Okay, I just... They're not paying me, just so it's you guys know. Guy. Yeah, they're not paying me to say that, just so you know. Like, I'm just so enthusiastic about that experience. If you're curious, it's 4DX. Yeah, 4DX. exactly. <laughs> so, it sounds like they're just like slipping <laughs> hundreds of bills into my pocket right now, but that's not the case at all. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Please, uh, <laughs> can't speak anymore. You, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Please be sure to check out Joanna Califatis on the social media. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out our other reactions, reviews, and short films. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Joanna Kalafatis. Peace out.